Hi guys and welcome back to episode 5 of Championship to Champions with Birmingham City. Um, today I'm bringing you back on the 23rd of January and we're going to have two games. The first is against West Ham in the FA Cup 4th round and then we're away to Wickham in the Championship. If we just take a look at what's happened in between episodes, um, you can see that I've kind of jinxed myself really. I kept going on about the fact that we were unbeaten in the league and the fact that those those four games here were going to be easy, easy wins. Little did I know that FM had something else in store for me. We struggled to a 1-1 with Middlesbrough. Against Cardiff it was nice. Um, it looked a bit iffy in defence. Um, Kiefer Moore getting through twice over the top. But we were absolutely fantastic in front of goal. Mark Roberts... I know he's, he's, he's now left, but on his uh, swan song leaving day, uh, leaving day as we'll call it, because that was the last time he played for us, um, he got two goals from corners, one one minute after the other, which is quite good. Um, then we just went on a poor run, to be honest. 1-0 uh, against Nottingham Forest away, and then 1-0 at home to Derby. That's when I started to see the rot start to sink in in terms of the tactic. It looks like we'd been found out. So what I did... Well, I kept it for one more game um, against Blackburn and we struggled to get a win out of that. It, it, it was touch and go for quite a while. So I, was, I created a new tactic against Swindon. Um, you can see uh, that this is just me messing about with it at first. We, again, I thought we were going to go out of the FA Cup because we were, we were below par. Um, with Middlesbrough, I was messing about with it and I changed back to my normal tactic at half-time because we were kind of... We weren't getting the amount of shots that I'd like. So I went back to my, my usual um, tactic. But but then, what I did realise against Preston is I made a couple more changes. I, I knocked the wing-backs forward, put them on the attack. So they over... Basically, it's like a wing overload tactic. Um, and if we just take a look at the stats against Preston, which is the one where I just used to complete... You can see here that we just dominated straight away. We, we completely dominated from start to finish. Didn't give Preston a, a, a shot on target, really. Um... They only had two corners. We had 60% of the possession, which is really good considering that if we look at Derby, we had 52% of the possession, but we only had five shots on target. We had 11 against Preston. So if we have a look at the tactic itself, what it is is a 4-3-2-1 basically. So it's, it's like a 4-3-3, three, three. Um, but what I have is I, I just overload the wings, basically. I, I don't have it that 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 wide in terms of that but what I do have is I have the left and right back running up the wings and, and knocking them in for Aaron Connolly or Bella or Palestri to get onto it it's quite a good tactic to be honest obviously I'll, I'll keep my ball playing def defender because I do like that I, I like to play at the back um, I think three in midfield it's quite good what I did have at one point was it was a four four two three one but the midfield itself was was a little exposed. So what I what I've done now is I've just put them back like that, um, and it, it, it's it's more solid. I'm I'm really excited about this tactic. I'm excited about the fact that now I've now got two tactics that that I can use, depending on what teams. So what I might do is I might just use this for a few games. Once it starts to get a bit stale, and it looks like we're gonna we're gonna get found out, I'll switch back to my my usual tactic, and that should get us through, hopefully. And keep us in the automatic promotion spots. At the moment, it looks like we're not going to catch Norwich because Norwich are, are, are on a fantastic run of form. If we take a look at their form at the moment, you know they haven't lost since October. They are running away with it again. Um, expected they they come down in the in, in last season from the Premier League. They've got a really good squad. Um, yeah, really really good squad. If we look at. Buendia, he's absolutely fantastic. Shouldn't be even be in this league. Hopefully he gets sold in January. Um, might give us a bit more of a chance. If we take a look, actually, because now it's in January, if we take a look at some of the transfers, we haven't really done a lot, if I'm honest. Um, you can see there that there's there's a star, <laughs> star player coming in. And that's Yaya Torre. He's coming in on £975 per week. That, that's just as a backup centre midfielder. I think that even though it's his age, he, he's still very good. He'll do a job for us. Um, I'm also getting Philippe 
Carballo as a free, free agent come the end of the season. I think he's quite good as well. Um, we've lost Keith Beld and David Davis to end of contracts, unfortunately. Once again, MLS and the Dutch League have come in and raided us. And Maxime Collin as well. I've had to kind of sell him because at the moment what's happening is because he's not playing enough, um, he's only got five five starts he doesn't want to sign a contract with us so obviously come January we had vultures around so I'm just trying to sell him I've, I've got an offer for 1.4 million if that if that goes through that'll be nice um, and what I've done is I'm just bringing in Luke 09 is it 09 yeah Luke 09 just to replace him as a backup right back we have also got uh, another backup right back which I didn't talk about I got in between episodes 1 and 2 and I forgot to mention him and this is Nicholas Cruiser um, he's a good player, three stars. He just he hasn't really played for me yet because I've had three right backs, um, and he's, he's probably the worst out of the three. But he's a decent backup right back. Quite, you know, it'll suit my my new tactic because he's an attacking fullback. He's got good crossing. His acceleration and pace isn't the best, but that's not too bad. Good mentals. Um, but yeah, so we I've still got that. If anything falls through. I did look to get Louis Cole from Hull, um, but he rejected me because it wasn't a big enough club, even though Hull are in League One. So I don't quite understand what that's talking about there, FM, even though we're second in the league. So if you want to explain that. Um, if we just take a, a look at the um, finances while we're here, we can see that we're not losing as much as we were. We're kind of stabilising in terms of losses. Still, still not very nice to have a loss, but I'm still confident we'll go up. Bournemouth are quite a scary prospect because we have got them after Coventry. So in, in three matches, we've got Bournemouth away. So I'm hoping that with this tactic, we can blow them away. Um, what we'll do is we'll get straight into the game now against West, West, Brom, West, Brom, West Ham. Um, and the team that I'm going to go with is Efridge in goal as a sweeper-keeper. The reason I'm going for a sweeper keeper is that I have quite a high defensive line. So I've just got him just to come in and, and just pick up any of the balls that come across. Um, then we've got Pedersen, Clark Slater, San Jose and Lard at the back. Pedersen, he, he's got a disciplinary, disciplinary problem. Um, as you can see, us seven yellows, one red. He, he's given away three or four penalties for the season so far. I don't quite know what to do with him. Um, what I might need to do is just put him on his own personalised instructions and just get him to stay on his feet. But yeah, I'm just carrying on now. So um, in the midfield three, we've got Keith Dimbeld as a box-to-box -box midfielder. That's only because I'm resting Curtis Jones. Um, John Terrell is my advanced playmaker. And Dan Crowley is now back as Amazala. I've got... Palestri and Bella as my inside forwards on the left and right wings. And then Aaron Connolly leading the line as an advanced forward. So let's get into it. If we can get a nice cut run going, it'd be lovely. I don't expect it against West Ham. Well, I mean, we, we've matched what the club wanted. They wanted fourth fourth round of the FA Cup. Um, we got there now. If, if we can sneak sneak this, I'm quite confident with this, this formation. I'll be honest, I've only really used it against Preston, so... He could come to backfire me against a good team like West Ham, but we'll see. And um, Palestri is bringing the ball forward. If he can pass it through to Connolly, that'd be lovely. Oh my God, went all the way himself. Lovely run. So there we can get. There we can see that we're already on top. Crowley with a call. corner free kick. Oh, that's great. That is fantastic, and we are one 0 up against Premier League opposition. Things you love to see. Top corner. Absolutely great. Fabianski had no chance there. And it looks like, and I don't want to blow my own horn, but I've got a, a very nice tactic on my hands here. I'm quite proud of myself. I felt quite good getting that one for United, but I'd, I'd spent all season with, with that one for United, just making little tweaks here and there. This was a, a panic change. And I, I think I spent about half an hour just, just having a little look at it um, and playing a couple of games just to see what 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 was the best in terms of instructions. Um, I, I feel like the, 
that this is, you know, we're all over them. I've also kept the corner tactic for the near post for San Jose, so let's just see if we can get a couple more there. But what I have done is I haven't give, put the long throws anymore because I don't think that it suits this tactic. I'd rather than pass it short and run up the wing and cross it in. Um, I'm not going to work ball into box. I think it's counterproductive with this, this tactic. John Terrell's knackered. I'm going to have to bring him off. Uh, there we go. And just like I was saying about the corners, we are now 2 0 up against West Ham. And I'm pretty <laughs> I'm pretty confident now looking at this team. Um, I know that I said I was going to get some reinforcements in. I look to get a new a new team in, you know, in terms of a midfield. Um, but I don't think I need to. I just think that was getting started in terms of the formation. I think we've got two really good formations now. Um, and if we just take a quick look at the stats, let's just have a quick look. Yeah, we're, we're once again, we're dominating. We're, we're holding West Ham to the sword. They're having absolutely no chances at all. We're just camped in their box. or camped in their half and pot shotting. I don't mind pot shots because some of them go in sometimes. Um, we're getting a lot more shots on target than we were with the previous tactic so I'll take that as well oh Ethan Lord almost and that is a very very good half I'll take that pump fists you've played so well played well but room for improvement guys uh, if we can make a statement here and maybe put four against them it'd be lovely but yeah um, in terms of the transfers itself what I might do um is I'm going to keep scouting for a, a midfielder because I, I, I'm not happy with the box-to-box -box options in terms of the midfielders I've got. Curtis Jones can get there, but then he's only a three-star and it means that he's, he's pulled out of his advanced playmaker role, which is something that I don't like. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep looking at that. But if I don't need to buy anyone, I'm not going to buy anyone. I'm not going to waste money um, and panic buy just because I've got a bit left. I'd rather just leave it. And not mess about with the team dynamics. We've, we've got a good dressing room. Lads are all playing really well. We've got a few bad eggs, obviously, because they're not playing. But they're not really, you know, they're not really a very influential player. So I'm not that bothered about it. And there's 2-1. That's fine. 2-1 against West Ham. It looks like they're, they're suddenly coming into it. And it may be due to the fact that most of my team are knackered now. What I'll do is I'll just go down to balance because I don't really want us to let in now we've played so well this game to, to throw it away at the last last 10 minutes to be awful and the lads deserve this to be honest I'm really really proud of the performance Pelestri's played really well Crowley's been amazing and there he goes he scores a second and I think that is it I think that's uh, closing time for West Ham we're going to shut up shop 3-1 onto the fifth round and the reason that, that I'm quite happy with this is that the FA Cup oh my god it's it's 4-1 fantastic Aaron Connolly he had to get in it's, it's not a it's not a Birmingham domination unless Aaron Connolly gets on the, the score sheet but with the FA Cup you, you get quite a, not, a nice little bit of uh, prize money the further you go and that'll be good for our balance plus the the, the Board will love me. Outstretched arms. Very pleased. 4-1. I'll take that. Oh, that was absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Right, guys. So what I'll do is I'll bring us back for the second game. And if there's any transfers in between or any movements, I'll let you know. Okay, we're now back for the Wickham game away. Um, since you were last with us, we've signed a couple of players. You'll know from the thumbnail of one certain player and the fact I was talking about him. And that is Yaya Torre. Um, bit of a blast from the past. Absolute legend for Man City and Barcelona. Um, his technical and mental attributes are, are absolutely fantastic. He's still a thick boy in terms of strength and balance. And the other reason that I've got him is, is that he's actually quite good in terms of training. So I've got him mentoring a group of players already. Um, he will feature throughout the season, second half of the season. Not as much as, as the rest of the players because of the pure fact that he's 37. So he'll, he's almost retired now. He's, he's almost like a granddad. 
Um, but he's quite good for a box to box or box to box or um, Mazala. The second signing, which I'm quite excited about, is Glenn Kamara from Rangers. Um, this is one that I've kind of pulled out the bag. I was looking for a box to box midfielder. He ticks a lot of those um, necessary uh, attributes in terms of what's needed for a box to box. He's not very good at finishing or long shots, but when you've got stats like that, I mean, 18 first touch, 19 technique, you don't really need it. He'll, he'll be dancing around the teams, to be honest. Um, I paid, I think it was 4.3 million for him. So I've, I've paid 1.3 million up front, as well as 1 million every year for the next three years, which I think is quite good. Um, he's still got a bit of potential. He's only 25, and he's only on 9.5k a week. I think that's a really good um, investment, to be honest. I'm sure he'll win points on his own. I cannot believe that Rangers weren't playing him. But what I have found, and I don't know if it's, if it's the same with you guys, is that the Scottish teams in FM, their players are, are, are really good. Like If you look at, at, at the, the Premier League, Scottish Premier League, like Motherwell and stuff like that, their players are almost championship level. And I don't think that's that's correct in real life. I mean, not to have a go at Scottish football, but it, I wouldn't say it's the same in terms of... Um, I'd say it's more physical, but I wouldn't say it's the same in in terms of um, you know technical and stuff like that. There's a lot of I'd put it more like League One. You know, you you see a lot of long shots and a lot of goals just coming out of nowhere. Obviously, Celtic and Rangers are, are a different beast up there, but yeah, I'm really happy with Glen Kamara. So now we've got uh, Wickham away, second versus twelfth. If we can win this, and hopefully Norwich lose we can get within a point of them and the team selection is so we've got Efridge in goal a change back four of Martinez, Wisdom, San Jose and Cruiser um, both left back and right back are knackered so they need a, a bit of a rest as well as Jake Clark's late. I'm just giving him the, the day off basically and then we've got Glenn Kamara coming in for his debut as box to box Curtis Jones back in his preferred Position as an advanced playmaker and then Imbola as Mamazala and then a front three of Bella Palestri and I've, I've actually brought Hogan in for a game just because Aaron Connolly needs a rest if, if it looks like we're we're not scoring or we're in trouble I'll bring on Connolly but I'm, I'm going to try and leave him off for, for this game so let's just get into the game shall we you can see that I've made quite a lot of changes uh, pump fists, recent form, yeah, let's do that. And hopefully with the new formation that we've still got, I mean, we beat West Ham 4-1 on our last outing. So if, if we struggle against Wickham, then I'm going to be seriously questioning whether or not it's a decent tactic. I, I can imagine that it, it's okay. We might just have a few nerves and it, it might just be because we've swapped a few players out. We have got a few reserves out, as as I'd like to say. Like Cruiser and Alex Martinez wouldn't usually get into the, the, the team. Palestri, I'm, I'm giving him a run of games because Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is having a go at me. So I don't really want him to turn out the loan just yet. It's good backup. Hogan, again, he's a impact sub more than anything. So let's just see how we get on. And he's currently Wickham with the ball. Um, good good save by Effridge. We, we, we're, we're still on top in terms of possession and shots. We haven't really t uh, changed them into shots on target, but you know, it's still ready to come. Alex Martinez on the run over to Bella. It's got Hogan almost. So if, we're, if we can get a goal in the next... No, no, not Alex Martinez, please. I think he's, he's out, which isn't good. Christian Pedersen, he's, he's knackered. But we'll, we'll just have to deal with it. And we can clear the corner. It's the ball is with Jones. There we go. Locks it in. I did also forget to say that Adam Ida has been returned to Norwich. Um, there's a rule in the Championship that you can only have five lone players in your match squad. And he was never going to get in, unfortunately, with the, the players that we, we use. So he was always just sat in the reserves. He, he came on for one or two games, but he, he wasn't really playing. Yeah, Alex Martin is going to have to come off. Um, so he's gone back. What I will need to do is maybe look into getting another striker. At the moment, Scott Hogan should be okay. 
And there we go, 1-0. Just as I said, Scott Hogan should be okay in terms of backup. I won't really be playing him against any of the big teams, but against the smaller teams in the bottom half, he's more than adequate. Great, great goal that is. Yeah, I'm bringing off Alex Martinez because he's injured. But 1-0 so far, um, I'm happy. We haven't really come out of the, uh, the stocks like we did last time. It looks like Wickham might get, get a goal back. To be honest, he's kind of even at the moment. So I don't know whether in the second half I might go attacking. Might bring on a couple more of the better players that I know I says we're, we're going to need a rest. But if we lose more points here, then I think that top spot's almost going to go away from us. So I think we need to win these games. These are games that are must-win games, to be honest. Norwich 2-0 up against Millwall. So I think we can say that it's it's got to be a must win. Norwich aren't looking like they're losing any points anytime soon, and it looks we we look like we're going to cement second place if we win because Bournemouth are are losing, which is good, and then we've got Bournemouth after Coventry, which is next. So if we can beat Bournemouth, um, then we've got second place cemented, and that's an automatic um, promotion, which is good. But I'd like to go up as, as champions, to be honest. Be a nice story, wouldn't it, Birmingham? I don't think we've ever gone up as champions. Well, not in the the recent era, anyway. I know we have back in history, but we haven't. Not since I've been following the Blues, have we gone up as champions? There we go, Leco, nicely. I do like it when my subs come on and repay my faith in them. It's two now. We're looking a lot more comfortable now. Um, I was going to bring on Connolly, but I think I'm going to leave him off. Because he does need a rest. And I'd rather him be fit and ready for Bournemouth. Again I'm going to need to assess the fit fitness of Scott Hogan. Because he looks like he's knackered as well. He might not make it through Coventry. Uh, I might have to get another loan in. I'll see who's on the market shortly. We're, we're, we're knocking the ball about comfortably here guys. Very nice. Actually this cruiser is quite, quite a decent player. I know that when I was speaking about him earlier. I was saying that I haven't really given him a... Uh, oh, there we go, 3-0. And it's, it's game over. Yeah, I was saying I haven't really given him a chance. Um, as you can see, a 7.2. Repaying my faith. Uh, I might just... What what I might do instead... I know that I've got uh, another right-back coming in. I might might just cancel that. Because I don't think we need a right-back. And it just seems to be eating up transfer budget that, that, that is unnecessary. So what I'll do is I'll bring on... I'll put Jonathan Lecco up front there and then I'll bring on John Terrell. I don't really want to bring on Sanchez here because he needs a rest. I'll do a nice 3-0 win away. And the good thing about this is it looks like we're not really letting any goals in either, which is good because I do like clean sheets. Good win for us. Media reaction. Martinez is out for one to three days. That's fine. So if we have a look at the championship now, um, Norwich won their game, which isn't good. However, Bournemouth lost their game, which is good. So we've got we're, we're four points. We've got a four point cushion between second and third. Um, that's good. Brentford have still got a game to play, but they're five points behind Bournemouth, so we haven't got to worry about them just yet. In terms of the playoffs, I think we've got that covered. We're fourteen points ahead of Watford, who have severely dropped off. If you look at the player stats, you can see that Aaron Connolly is still the leading scorer in the championship, which is great. Neil Lethbridge is, is creeping up on the clean sheets. I'd like him to get the, the golden glove. That'd be nice. Um, and if we look at the schedule, we can see uh, that we've got Coventry, Bournemouth, and then we've got Newcastle. So what I might do, it might be, I think we're going to have to come back for Bournemouth and Newcastle, to be honest. Um, two, two very big games. If we can make a make a statement against Bournemouth and then go into Newcastle with a with a morale the highest possible, we could sneak a win, and then we'd be in the sixth round of the FA Cup. That'd be nice. Um, okay, guys. So what I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it here, um, and then we will come back for Bournemouth. I know it's it's only one match in between, but it's too tasty not to. So once again, um, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe 
It will help the channel and I will speak to you again soon.